afraid of him. Eh? Let him be afraid of you. Let him know that you are troublesome. Eh? How many of you will want the devil to jot down your names? You are afraid. <laughs> Let the devil write your name. So you see, some of us, the devil does not care about us. Because the sort of things that you are not supposed to do, you do. So you sit here, he knows that you belong to him. He is not afraid of you. But there are certain people that when the devil hears their name, he is sure that he is afraid of them. Let's rise and begin to pray. That Father, make me that kind of a Christian that you will love. Make me that kind of a Christian that the devil will be afraid of. Shall we all pray? It is not enough coming to church. But let us write our names solidly in the Lamb's book of life. But let the devil also jot our names down because we are disturbing his kingdom. Let's pray together. One, try to be a good Christian. Fasten the back and Lord God Almighty, be a blessing to us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, open our eyes to see you and to worship you. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Rabere Asan, the Biriatayan. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. trying to do a series on the glorious church. Last week I began it somewhere and I want to continue today. Please, we are looking at the glorious church. The initial stage is we shall be taking close look at the goal of the church. At the goal of the church. So if you like, you can write the goal of the church as the topic. Last week we began discussing the glorious church. We were looking at the goal of the church. The goal is a result or achievement towards which effort is directed. When we are talking about a goal, we are saying that the result or the achievement towards which effort is directed. The end, the aim. So when we come to church, we are not just churching. The ties we pay. The Lord's Supper, we come to commune with God. Um, the fastings we do. The cleanup campaigns we do. The worship. And all that we do in church. Coming here every Sunday. Coming weekdays and all that. Where is it leading us? We have a goal. We are not just coming here to listen to the word of God and go. No, the church that Jesus established has a goal. It is important, therefore... That we are clear about the goal of the church. Where we are heading towards. The end of the age. And the end of the church. Where the church is aimed at. All that we come here to do. Must culminate in something. When Jesus said I will build my church. In his mind he had the goal of the church. Where he was taking us to. And then he had the purpose. The purpose is why the church exists. And then he had the process. The process is how to do things in the church to be able to attain the goal. Let me just go back and restate what I just said. When Jesus said, I will build my church, 
The statement, my church, means my church. The church doesn't belong to me, not the church of Pentecost. I am the leader of the church, but the church does not belong to me. I'm sitting on the laps of Jesus, the owner of the church. So when he said, I will build my church, he had the goal, the aim, why he's building his church and the ultimate end of the church. And then he had a purpose in mind. And then the process of building the church is also with him. And he has written them down. So we are not just churching. We need to follow the pattern. And then follow the blueprint and do what is in his mind. Have I communicated? So, so we are not just churching. There is a goal of the church. There is a goal of the church. The purpose of the church is why the church exists. Why the church exists. So there is a difference between the goal. The goal is where the church is heading to. The ultimate end. How is it going to end? But the purpose is, as of now, that the church is still continuing on the planet Earth. What are we supposed to do? Why do we exist? And then the process is the ways and means by which we should do the church, the church of God. I will just go through the purpose uh, for some few minutes and then come back to the one that we are discussing, the goal of the church. You see, the church has become the body of Christ. He says that the church now represents his body. So whatever Jesus was doing in the flesh, the church is supposed to continue. So the purpose of the church is to continue what Jesus began to do and to teach. Shall we quickly go to Acts chapter 1? Acts chapter 1. From verse 1 and 2, the book of Acts chapter 1. 1 and 2. In my former book, Theophilus, this is Dr. Luke, the writer of the Gospel of Luke, who is also the author of us speaking. So he's writing to someone called Theophilus. And this is what he's saying. In my former book, that is St. Luke, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. What Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. So the former book, the book of Luke, was about all that Jesus began to do. So in the book of Luke, there is the birth of Jesus, the announcement of his birth, the birth of Christ, his ministry, till he was caught up into heaven. Then this is the second book that he is writing. So this second book is about what Jesus continues to do and to teach. Because he says that the first one is about what Jesus began to do and to teach. Then it simply suggests that this second book is about what Jesus continued to do and to teach. But in the second book of us, you don't see Jesus in the book. You only see the disciples, that is the church. But Christ is in us, using our hands and our mouth and our legs. And he's continuing what he began to teach and to do. Let me say that again. This second book of us. It's about what Jesus continued to do and to teach. But you don't see Jesus in the book of Acts. You see the Peters and the Pauls and the Johns. But they form the church. But the Holy Spirit who was in Christ is also in the midst of the people and in the church. So what he began to do and to teach, he through the church is continuing what he began to do and to teach. Are we together? So when we are talking about the purpose of the church, we are saying that why is the church on earth? The reason why the church is on earth is to continue from where Jesus left off. The Bible says that the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. So the church should also seek and to save that which was lost. Everything he did, the church should continue and also do the same. That is the purpose of the church. Ours is to make sure that through us, many are saved. Earth is also transformed. And the world is transformed and brought under the rule of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why we are saying that as long as the church is on this planet, Earth, we need to possess our spheres. 
bring them all under the control of the law. But we are talking about the goal of the church. The goal of the church. The goal is to prepare the church as a bride for himself. The goal of the church is in the long run, our prayers, our fastings, the teachings, the preachings, the evangelistic ministries that we hold and all that should be able to fashion this church as a bride for Christ, the bridegroom. So he is preparing us for himself. Ultimately, if the church is going to be caught up as a bride for himself, a beautiful bride. Let's read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. Ephesians 5:27. Ephesians 5:27. And to present her to himself as a radiant church, as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. This one was in the context of marriage. Then when Paul was talking about the fact that the husband is ahead and he should love the wife and both of them should submit to one another, then he made this statement. He says that marriage is, is a mystery. It is a symbol of Christ and his church where Christ is the bridegroom and the church is the bride. And the marriage ceremony has not come on yet. So all of us are brides of the bridegroom. One day he will be totally married to us and we will be with him forever. So as long as the church is on this planet earth, the Bible describes the church as a bride being prepared for the bridegroom who is Christ. So ultimately, we'll be caught up for him as his bride. So that is the ultimate goal of the church. So all that we are doing is to fashion us and make us beautiful, wonderful bride presented to him who is the bridegroom. Are we together? Are we together? Now, the church today seems to have forgotten this glorious end or the goal. And so the church is not so much concerned about the spots, the wrinkles, the blemish. People are just churching. There has not been any generation in our country that we have so many ministers of the gospel than this generation. You go out there and there are so many billboards. Everyone is a pastor. You see people working in the banks and they are also pastors somewhere. And we see all sorts of ministers. Some post as angels. Some will tell you that when you see me, there is a last end. See, it looks like some occults have even joined the ministry. And they call themselves bishops, apostles, and whatever. But you see, it is in this generation that the church is also so poor and weak. Because the church is not able to change the society. It means that it is weak. In the law of osmosis, where the concentration is, it flows into where the concentration is less. So once the life or the lifestyle of the world is flowing into the church, then the church is weak. So the church in our generation does not just care about the spots and the wrinkles. It doesn't matter how you make your money. People sit in church and the two of them, are fornicators. They don't care. They come and then they worship God. They do not care because we have forgotten about the goal of the church. Have I communicated? Yeah. They have forgotten about the goal of the church. The apostle Paul says that I should be careful so that I don't run my race in vain. Let us be careful so that our coming to church every day and night will not be in vain. Because there's a goal for the church of God. It's a goal for the church of God. Do you remember that one day, Jesus told the disciples that he was going to prepare a place for them? Do you remember? Can we read John 14? 
Let's read verse 1, 2, and 3. John 14, 1, 2, 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are main rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Now hold on. Hold on. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. He was speaking to the disciples. The disciples represents us. So somehow he was telling the church that I'm going to prepare a place for you. The next verse, verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. So, don't you think that you one day finish? Huh? Or you prepare every day, prepare every day, prepare. He says that when it is done, he will come back and take us to himself. This city that he is preparing, if you read, it's a room. He, he used the word house. That is why he says a room. But you see, uh, it's not a house. It is a city. Is going to prepare for us a place. A place. And when he is done, he will come for us. So, the preparation of this city meets the end of the church. Let me say that again. Because it is the church that is going to be caught to meet in the city. The, the city is being prepared for the church. Once the city is done, we will be out of here. So at the end of the day, we are looking forward to that city. And as we wait for that city, he is still preparing us as a bride for himself. Hallelujah. Are we here? Revelation 19, verse 6. I'll read up to verse 8. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude. Like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah! For our Lord God, omnipotent, reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come. The wedding of who? The Lamb has come. And what? And his bride has made herself ready has made herself ready. It gives us the impression that all the while, the bride was being prepared. One day, the wedding will come on. It's going to happen in that city that Jesus said, I'm going to prepare. Yeah. The next verse, 8. Let's read together. Ready for fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to... Fine linen stands for what? The righteous acts of the saints. Now, see, when the bride is coming in, we all pay attention to the dress the bride is wearing. And then you hear the woman saying, hey, it's nice, it's beautiful. Hey, this one, is it from, is it from America? And somebody, hey, it was sold here in Ghana. So are you sure? Which shop? The woman, say we in the intro. <laughs> As for them, they don't just keep quiet or they talk. <laughs> so they'll be discussing because what makes the bride bride is what the bride is wearing otherwise we know this lady already she's a member of this church but on that day something different is on her that makes her the bride standing out amongst all of us I don't think that on, on a wedding day any of us will go and wear a long gown like a bride and come and stand here you wouldn't do that because you are not the focus. If you do that, the thicknesses will throw you away. I'm telling you. They will ask you, why? Why? Do you want to compete with the bride? So you don't do that. The bride is a focus. And the bride is being prepared. And the Bible says that the garment that the bride was wearing in the revelation that John saw is what? Or was what? The righteous ass of the saints. So when you are not doing things right or when you are not righteous, 
when you are not living the kind of holy life, when the church is not concerned about the spots and wrinkles, we are disqualifying our members from being part of the wedding ceremony. So when you are hiding and you are doing anything evil, don't think that you are deceiving the presiding elder because you are smart. These days, you don't need to get pregnant for people to suspend you. Do you need to do that? Before the secure and the injections, do you need to? Huh? When you get pregnant, even your fellow ladies will tell you, ah, I used to pay. So, you can continue to do that. But let me tell you for a fact, you will miss that day. Because the garment that the bride is going to wear is a righteous ass of the saints. And listen to me carefully. Anytime that you do anything wrong or good or you do something in the secret, there are two people who are aware. Can you tell me who and who? <laughs> You see, maybe your mother didn't see it. Uh, your dad is not aware. Your pastor is not aware. Your boss is not aware that you are forging figures. And that the money that you are supposed to take to the bank, you are, you are diverting it. He is not aware. Even you can do whatever. And even the president will not be aware that you are the minister who is causing us all these problems. But who and who? Away. Yeah, just lift up your hands and then mention one of them. Yes. Huh? Your very self, but take yourself out. Because you are hiding, so you are out. Apart from you, who and who are away? Uh, oh, lift up your hands and say it, if you are sure. Yes, my brother. The devil. Do we agree? Then who else? You see, it is these two people who, who, who matter in our judgment. And so you are not safe. You can, the secure can secure you, but you are not safe. Shall we bow down our heads and then pray that if there is anything that we are hiding, let us repent of them. Because the day will reveal it. And you may be ashamed because the devil is the accuser. He will accuse you before God. Let us pray that God have mercy. It's not just about sexual immorality. It is about anger. It is about theft and stealing. It is about uh, being loggerheads with some friend. It is about harboring bitterness in your heart. Shall we just pray that God have mercy and forgive us. Let us pray that our lives will be plain before him. Shall we rise for a moment as we pray? Shall we rise for a moment? And then please pray. Be serious about this. Talk about that and move out. Find a way to move out. Tell God to help you to move out. What you do with your husband, the anger, the quarrels, anything that you do that does not please him, the day will reveal it. Doesn't matter whether we know it or not. Shall we pray? Please pray. Got my mind made up, and I won't turn back, cause I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back, because I want to see my Jesus. Side. 
goodbye well. Shall we sit, please? I'll stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I'll stay no longer with you. I've made up my mind to go that way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go that way the rest of my life.